Hi, I'm Lewis. Honestly, I'm a pretty normal guy. I work on the family farm, just like my dad and his dad, and take pleasure in the simple things. I got married out of high school, took over my dad's farm, and haven't really seen much outside my home in Iowa. Shoot, I never even went to college. The most important people in my small world are my wife Lucy and our daughter Christine. It's when it comes to these two that my story strays from normal. Lucy and I adopted Christine. That doesn't mean that I love her any less than my own flesh and blood. In fact, I love her more fiercely than anything else in the world because of how much of a deadbeat her bio dad is. It shouldn't have been like that because her bio dad, Mark Johnson, was my best friend. I thought he would be better than he turned out to be. Mark and I were close from a very young age. His dad, Matthew, and my dad were buddies and neighbors. In fact, they were both also connected in the way small farmers are, working together for better rates and trying to make sure we didn't get screwed over by big companies. Because of that, Mark and I often spent a lot of time together and had basically been raised like brothers, playing paddle and goofing off. As we grew older and developed our own personalities, the two of us went on different paths. I was always the person who was comfortable building on what my parents had done. Farming was in my blood, and I wasn't really looking to change that. Mark, on the other hand, was always fascinated by life in the city. In most aspects, we were really different. I looked at high school as a bore and preferred to learn hands-on. I mean, not that I was an idiot, but I just didn't get the point of learning English and maths when it wasn't going to help me with harvesting or fixing our old John Deere. Mark, on the other hand, had the highest grades we had ever seen. Despite our differences, we were still best friends. As graduation rolled around, Mark got admission to the University of Chicago, one of his dream colleges. Naturally, his amazing SAT score and boatload of AP classes helped him finance the whole thing too, and we both knew that it was going to be a fork in the road for us. I was planning on proposing to Lucy, who I'd been with ever since I was 16. Even now, some people think it's crazy that I settled down with the first girl that I was with, but our relationship is strong and built on love. That conviction helped me with my decision all those years ago, and Lucy had the same principles and long-term goals as me. A week after my wedding, Mark went off to Chicago. We were still close, but he began to change slowly. City life was fast-paced, and Mark always had a little trouble with girls. Not in the sense that he was socially awkward, it's just that he was very short-term with his relationships. He never had a proper relationship in high school, and always had issues with commitment. Once he got to college, things went haywire. From his conversations with me, it felt like he had a different girlfriend each week. Now, I'm not one to judge what other people do, but it felt like he didn't talk about anything except girls. His grades also dropped a fair bit in college, and things back home with his family also got rough. Mr. Johnson had never really been on board with him leaving the farm. Even though Mark had gone off to college, there was always some tension with his dad about coming back home. I guess Mark wanted to leave farming altogether, while his dad thought that he would eventually come back. Eventually, my best friend became more of someone to keep in touch with. He also began to judge me and Lucy for being docile and not adventurous like him. After college, he began to work in sales, kind of styling himself like a Midwest Don Draper. Mark became less and less important in my life, and I stopped thinking about him until 10 years ago. All of a sudden, he called me while I was relaxing at home. Hey man, something happened. I know that you're close to my dad, do you think you could talk to him with me? Oh shoot, is everything alright? Um, yeah man, I can talk to your dad. Yeah, thanks. Actually, I mean, how about I talk to you first? I'm going to come back in a few months. Let's talk then. I spoke to Lucy about it, and both of us were worried. I didn't know what was going on with my friend, but when I spoke to him on call, he was on edge. I did try and pry the full story out of him during later calls, but Mark was insistent that I meet him in person. Come spring that year, Mark met me at the old arcade where we used to hang out. Okay, I'll spit it out. I got a girl pregnant. She wants to keep it, but I'm not ready to be a father. What? How did this happen? I don't know, okay. I just don't know. She's some chick from my old college. We met during a party, and I was a little hammered. I was hanging out with some people from my old fraternities. Uh, I don't remember if we used protection. You don't remember? Dude, what did you do? This isn't something you can hide from your dad, man. I'm not going to hide it, okay? That's why I came to you. I was hoping that you could talk to him about it. Maybe after I leave? When Mark uttered those words, I knew the distance between us as friends was too great. 
I mean, first off, he was stupid enough to get a stranger pregnant, and secondly, he wasn't even thinking about what being a father meant. All he was concerned about was how he could avoid getting his ears boxed by his dad. You can imagine how things went after that. Both of his parents were livid, and the girl, Bella, wasn't interested in getting married to a man who was so much older than her. A baby out of wedlock was almost unheard of in our small town at least, definitely hushed up when it happened, but both Lucy and I understood her perspective and took the girl's side. The best that Mark could do was try and co-parent the baby and ensure that his baby mama didn't have to drop out of college. In the months of pregnancy that followed, it was clear that Mark wasn't going to be a stand-up guy. He focused on his work and didn't give any time to Bella. His parents thankfully stepped in and tried to give her some kind of support. Bella's parents were from Mexico, and she hadn't brought up the fact that she was pregnant with them either. They were really conservative, and hell, hell, did. She was only 21. Looking back on it all, I wonder how tough it must have been on Bella, trying to hide an entire pregnancy from her family, while trying to navigate co-parenting with a person who was more interested in getting promotions and partying than learning about babies. Lucy and I were also planning to have kids, but decided to put this on hold and support Bella as best we could. I don't know how, but we felt a little guilty about how close we used to be with Mark and wanted Bella to know that not everyone from our town was as spoiled as he was. All these things melted away when Christina was born. I was named her godfather and had a special connection with her since her birth. Speaking of which, I recall that Mark barely even made it to her birth, while Lucy and I traveled to Chicago the week of Christine's due date. Bella was tired and stressed and seemed terrified of being a mother. Lucy was like a big sister to her as well, and we both empathized with her a lot more than the jerk that my best friend had turned into. In the middle of all this mess was a cute little baby named Christine. The months that followed got even messier. Bella couldn't hide her child from her parents, and keeping the pregnancy from them made things even worse. Can you imagine your daughter calling you just to say that she had a kid? Her parents flew over from Mexico. Apparently, they were from a very affluent background and couldn't afford to have such a scandal happen. They gave Bella two options, either she stayed in the U.S. with Christine or moved back to Mexico with her family. Mark would be provided a handsome sum to take care of the baby, and Bella would have to waive her parental rights through a complicated legal procedure. We genuinely didn't know how things would go. On one hand, Bella was really young, and taking care of Christine wasn't easy for her. On the other hand, nobody ever wants to cut off all contact with their kid. I feel like the decision would have been easier for her if Mark was even 10% more present for the baby. The reason I haven't really spoken about Mark's role in all this is because, well, he had no role. He didn't bother meeting Bella's parents, and when she told him about the ultimatum she had been given, his only reasoning for her to stay back in the US and lose all touch with her family was that someone needs to watch the baby. His behavior just cemented the idea in Bella's mind that she would be a single mother and that wasn't something she could do. With a heavy heart, she agreed to her parents' ultimatum and waived her parental rights to Mark. Mark took care of Christine from this point onwards. Initially, everyone was hesitant about this setup. Lucy and I were worried about whether Christine would be properly taken care of. Mark's parents were also on the same page as us and worried about their grandchild. However, Despite being so reluctant to raise a child, Mark seemed even more reluctant to hand over the reins to me and Lucy. I had offered, when Christine was only a few months old, to adopt her officially. The two of us had a lot of conversations about what would be the right thing to do, and we both felt that giving Christine a safe and joyful environment was the way to go. Besides, I don't think that your child has to be connected by blood, only by the bond of parenthood. A parenthood which was sorely lacking in Mark. At the time, he had shrugged it off and said that he would figure out a way. Besides, he didn't want his kid to be raised in nothing, USA his words. Mark said this is a joke, but I was genuinely hurt by it and told him as much. He rationalized it by saying that he wanted Christine to see the world with him and not be kept within our small town where everyone would know her background. That logic did make some sense because even Mark's parents had to go through a lot of gossip because of their son. Despite how grating his personality had become, Mark eventually did step up and began to take care of Christine like a real father. He transitioned to working from home as much as he could. When it was absolutely crucial for him to be traveling, he would drop the baby off to his parents or me and Lucy. As worried as we had been, it seemed like everything would be fine for Christine, and hopefully Mark would also learn to mature as a person. 
He lived with Christine in a small apartment on Madison Street and actually began to treat her like his daughter. Boy, how wrong we were. When Christine was three, Mark met a girl named Kelsey. She was almost 10 years younger than him and was interning at the agency he used to work at. From the first time I saw her on his Instagram story, out clubbing, I knew that things were about to get bad. He began an on-again, off-again relationship with Kelsey and dropped off Christine back in Iowa more and more often. Sometimes he would be gone for weeks on some kind of bender. Obviously, this was the time a little. Kids started pre-kindergarten, so it wasn't going to work if he kept doing this. However, Mark had the bright idea that he would homeschool Christine for a few years. Obviously, none of us were on board with this. Now, I don't necessarily think homeschooling is a bad thing, but seeing how Mark was infatuated with his new young girlfriend, we all knew that homeschooling was just an excuse for him to keep Christine living with him when it suited him and keeping her with us otherwise. It was time for an intervention. However, even before we could talk to Mark, I spoke to Mr. Johnson and learned something that sunk my opinion of the guy even lower. Apparently, he wanted to put his own daughter up for adoption. The reason? Kelsey apparently came across a large inheritance and wanted to travel the world. If Mark pooled in the money he had gotten from Bella's parents for taking care of Christine, mind you, they could live without a care in the world. Apparently, the reason their relationship was so turbulent was because Kelsey felt weirded out by the fact that Mark was a single father. So, she told him to pick between a journey with her or staying back in Chicago with Christine and breaking up. Mark wanted to go with her, and the two of them were planning on documenting the whole thing on social media and making money off of that. Obviously, Mark didn't think a little kid would fit into this scenario, and he said that it would be best if Christine had a better life with someone else in the city since he had begun to feel tied down by her. Mark's dad sidelined his crazy plan for adoption by saying that he and his wife would take care of their granddaughter for the time being, so that Mark could try out his dream for a year. At this moment in time, I learned one thing some people don't deserve to have kids. I mean, abandoning an innocent soul for such selfish reasons was the worst thing that I could ever think of. I mean, for Bella, I saw the pain that she went through upon having to leave her daughter behind, but Mark... Mark didn't think twice about destroying the relationship that he had somehow managed to build with Christine. He was honestly insufferable. Nobody wanted to talk to him, and after Christine was with her grandparents, we cut off all contact with Mark. Nobody went with him and Kelsey to the airport to see them off on their grand adventure. During the year that Mark was away, Christine suffered terribly. She didn't know the reason her dad had just up and left, and while she was happy with her grandparents, sometimes she would ask where daddy was. However, Matthew, Uncle Louie, and Auntie Lucy were always there to dote on her. I haven't spoken much about Christine, but she really was a caring, compassionate little kid. We got her enrolled in a kindergarten in our small town, and thankfully, our fears about rumor-mongering and bullying turned out to be unfounded. If anything, it felt like she was more at home in Iowa than in Chicago, where she didn't really have any friends her age. Mark was gone for a year, and then two years. Then, he suddenly dropped a call to Mr. Johnson and said that he wanted to waive his parental rights. His one demand was that his parents try to send Christine away to live in the city. This was the straw that broke the camel's back and Mr. Johnson hatched a plan that would ensure that Mark couldn't mess with his daughter's life anymore. He agreed to Mark's claims and then decided to have a small chat with me. Son, you and I both know that we're not going to give the kid up to some random stranger. To be frank with you, I don't even know how Mark thinks that's going to happen. I don't know, Mr. Johnson, he's not the same person I grew up with, but legally, he still is Christine's parent. How do we fix that? Well, here's what I think that good for nothing isn't going to come back to the States anyhow. What we should do is consider treating it as a case of abandonment. I have a few friends in court who would be able to help us take over Christine's legal guardianship. Oh, that's great. So you'll be taking care of her, Mr. Johnson? No, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. The wife and I have been getting on in years. By the time Christine's 18, we'd be touching 70. After Mark can't interfere, I want you and Lucy to take care of Christine. I think she's more your kid than she is my son's. He specifically told me that I shouldn't consider having you two adopt her because he thinks that you guys aren't the right fit, but I'm not listening to him a moment longer. So that became the plan. Mark was in touch with his dad during this time, and we lied to him about the whole process. Sometimes he'd be in Spain, sometimes in the Maldives, so he didn't really question it too much. Hell, he didn't come back for another year. 
During this time, Lucy and I became Christine's legal guardians. We gave her the best life that we could muster, and she loved it. I remember when she was seven, Christine called us mom and dad for the first time. Despite being so young, her precocious nature helped her realize that her real father wasn't looking out for her at all, even if she had some early memories of him. With this high point of stability, also came a low point somehow, Mark was back in the US. He'd been able to build a nice career as an influencer with Kelsey, and they were done traveling for the time being. Instead, he was settling down in Chicago and going back to his old life. Albeit, with a lot more fans of his life, I wonder what they would think of the real Mark. The bad part about Mark coming back was that he suddenly wanted to speak to Christine, without even thinking about what it might do to her emotionally, Mr. Johnson told me that this insistence led to him finding out that Christine had been adopted by us and I should look ahead to a very livid phone call. I got it just a few days later. Lewis, how dare you? You and Lucy aren't cut out to take care of my daughter. I don't want her living in our small town, man. I can't believe all of you lied to me. Mark. Listen, she likes it here. If anything, you were the only person who couldn't take care of your daughter. I've spoken to Christine about this after your dad told me you were back in the U.S. She's not interested in talking to you. Maybe when she's older, she'll reach out to you. Not right now. Oh, come on, she's just a kid. How could she know what she wants? I've got a nice home and Kelsey and I are planning on getting married too. I think she'd be fine with Christine being a part of our family now. Mark. You don't get to pick and choose when she's a part of your family. This conversation is over. Just you see, I'm still their father, you hear? You hear me, lay I hung up on him and braced myself. Sure enough, Mark served us a summons to family court. Things were going to be messy over the next few months, or so I thought. The case eventually dragged on for a whole year. Thankfully, it was finally settled in my favor, and something even crazier happened someone found out about the whole thing on social media. Mark's career online was in shambles once people found out that he had abandoned his daughter. Lucy and I had no idea how this happened since we had kept the whole thing private for Christine's well-being. Things started falling like dominoes after that. Kelsey left Mark so her own brand would be saved. He left without his girlfriend and having blown through. All his money, Mark also began to spiral. He lost his job and couldn't pay the mortgage on the house he had bought. For a whole year, things got steadily worse until he just disappeared off the map entirely last month. We didn't really know why, but it might have been to avoid debtors. Last week, when Lucy was out in the backyard with Christine, I heard a knock on my door and went to check who it was. It was Mark. Hey, I. Just shut up, man. How dare you even show your face here? Listen, listen, I know. I have an offer that can help the two of us. I get that you don't want me in Christine's life. I just came here to let you know I'm going to abide by that. I, I've gotten into some trouble and I'll be going to South America in a while. You won't hear from me after that. I, I'm glad to hear that you've matured. I know you're in a tough spot. I can't even say that you don't deserve it, but I hope it works out for you. Yeah, about that, I was wondering if you could loan me some cash. I need about $10,000 to get things started. I don't really have anything left. Yeah, fine. That was the last I heard from Mark. He took the money and vanished. I guess he must have made his way down south. No money, no girlfriend, and no daughter. This whole story doesn't really have much of a moral, but I just want to say that you have to do right by the people you bring into the world. If you don't, karma will get you. That's the only moral you can learn from this. Thankfully, Christine is doing even better than ever. She's gone to parks, played softball, and made a best friend, things that she might not have been able to do if she was raised by Mark. Lucy and I are proud to call her our daughter.